hello there. Thanks very much indeed for inviting me along today to speak to you. Um, my name is Peter Cairns. I'm Executive Director of rewilding charity Scotland the Big Picture. I've got 10 minutes and I'm going to try and answer three questions. So those three questions. Why are we having this conversation? What is rewilding and where is Scotland right now on its rewilding journey? Well, there's no way of sugarcoating the first question. But the reason we're having this conversation is that we're in the eye of a storm. Climate breakdown and global nature loss are knocking on our door. We're having this conversation specifically in Scotland because of this landscape and this one and this one. All of these landscapes pretty much mirror hundreds of others, millions of acres across Scotland's uplands. Despite their unquestionable beauty and drama, these bare glens are for the most part ecological vacuums, geological wonders surrounded by centuries of dewilding. Ghana, the complex woodlands that once shaped them, gone are many of the animals that once lived in them, and gone too are many of the people who once lived from them. Scotland's beauty and drama, for the most part, lies dormant, muted, some might say dying. So we're having this conversation because of an illness that has taken hold. It's a condition that has led to Scotland becoming one of the most nature depleted countries in the world in terms of the biodiversity that we've lost. It's a condition that has led us to a point where our nature denuded glens are not only accepted as normal, but cherished and celebrated by most people. It's a condition called ecological blindness. And this is a quote from a young ecologist, Gus Routledge. And Gus is right. Most people don't see the need to fix our landscapes because they don't perceive that they're broken. 2021 marks the beginning of the United Nations decade on ecosystem restoration. This is the first time there's been a global movement to restore and recover our degraded living systems. Rather than simply trying to protect the fragments and threads of nature we have left, but to arrest and reverse the policies and trends that have brought us to this point requires a huge global effort. We need to think big and we need to think bold desperately hanging on to those tiny green boxes that are our nature reserves, it isn't enough. We need rewilding. So what is rewilding? Rewilding is an opportunity to return abundance and diversity of life to our degraded ecosystems. It's an opportunity for Scotland to lead the way in transforming its land and sea so that they work in all their colourful complexity. It's an opportunity to stitch back together a tapestry of life where natural processes drive vibrant living systems. Processes like predator-prey dynamics, like carcass scavenging and nutrient cycling. Rewilding is about encouraging rivers shaded by corridors of alder and willow to run as they want to, as they need to. Rewilding is about connectivity across the landscape, encouraging native woodland to expand, binding soils, regulating our climate, creating wildlife highways for red squirrels. Rewilding is about understanding that a forest is much more than just a sea of trees. It's a, a complex community of soil microbes, lichens, mosses, dead trees, dying trees, tall trees, huge trees, tiny trees, all coming together in a constantly evolving system. Rewilding is about re-wetting, restoring Scotland's peatlands that across huge areas have been drained and burned, giving them a chance to purify our water and store carbon, as well as providing a home for, for some of our most precious and rare wildlife. Rewilding asks us all to think differently, to reconsider our place in the natural order as just one species among many. So it's as much a philosophical change in mindset as it is a physical change to the land and sea. At its most basic level, rewilding is anything that counteracts more dewilding, anything that joins up and enriches habitats rather than further fragment and degrade them, anything that results in more wildlife and not less wildlife. Rewilding is very much a journey, a process. 
So where is Scotland right now on that journey? Well, there are huge challenges. There's no getting away from that. But there are also many stories that show what is possible. Red kites have returned to Scottish skies in the last 30 years. Ditto sea eagles. Ospreys are now breeding in greater numbers than at any time in modern history. Pine martins have bounced back almost from the brink of extinction. And there are whales, big whales, increasingly being sighted in Scottish waters. And of course, beavers are now back doing their beavery work in Scotland's rivers and wetlands after an absence of 400 years. And certainly, as far as Scotland, the big picture is concerned, to optimise the efficiency, if you like, of the ecological engine, we want to see more native species restored so that they in turn can help restore vibrant, dynamic living systems. Ecological restoration, nature recovery, rewilding, call it what you will, is taking place, is taking hold in places like Glen Affric, in places like Cairngorms Connect, where young forests are on the march for the first time in generations, and natural process are being, processes are being allowed to shape and govern the landscape. Craig Meggy is another landscape scale restoration initiative. Ditto Allerdale in Sutherland, Ditto Carafran in the borders. This bare glen, or this glen was, was completely bare just 20 years ago, but thanks to the inspiring efforts of just a small group of individuals, there's a wild wood now creeping up the valley sides. These are just a few from a, a growing list of exciting rewilding projects, bringing about ecological change. But what is crucial here, what is crucial for the future of rewilding is that this process, this journey isn't at the expense of people. Rewilding doesn't mean depeopling, quite the opposite. Rewilding needs to demonstrate that nature rich landscapes are not only beneficial ecologically, but they have a tangible economic and social value to local communities through a diverse range of nature-based enterprises. This is what hundreds of Scottish glens look like. This is described as a working landscape. But is this landscape really working for nature, for climate and crucially for people? This is what this glen could look like. Surely here there is more opportunity for people in a complex, diverse, multi-dimensional landscape. It's often portrayed that we have to choose between nature or people, but we really can have both. Finally, I'd like to just talk a little bit about people. When, when most of us talk about rewilding, we tend to talk about habitat restoration or bringing back lost or threatened species. But in many ways, that's the easy bit. We know how to do the physical stuff. The greater challenge lies with people's hearts and minds. Rewilding challenges our preconceptions about what Scotland should look like. And many people cherish those bare glens. They're comfortable, they're familiar. So the key to the rewilding door rests with a change in people's mindset, overcoming ecological blindness and seeing the landscape through fresh eyes, accepting nature as an ally and not as something to be tamed and conquered. The rewilding debate is so often characterised by a, a narrative of, of despair and division, focusing on what Scotland isn't and whose fault that is, rather than what it could be. And I see that narrative a great deal when it comes to hen harriers. And although I completely understand the anger and frustration when a harrier is killed, I do also believe that attitudes to hen harriers will change. These three chicks um, are being fitted with a satellite transmitter um, from a nest in, in the Cairngorms. This estate had no breeding harriers just five years ago. Today, there are six, seven, eight pairs grow, uh, breeding every year. And that estate is, is not alone by any means. Ultimately, legislative change may well help hen harriers, but it's long-term cultural change that will allow them to prosper. It's about hearts and minds. And I'm heartened by the fact that, <clears throat> excuse me, you've only got to go back 70 years and red squirrels were being killed as a bounty, something that would be unthinkable today. 
So attitudes do change, but it isn't easy. And it certainly won't happen by simply shouting at people who don't agree with, um, with our point of view. So thanks very much indeed for, for allowing me to speak today. I hope you found that useful. Um, if you'd like to know more about rewilding and how you can get involved, you can visit our website and follow us on social media. So have a great day and uh, yeah, goodbye. <laughs>